Just who are you? And should you be accepted for as much? Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fortin. We are here for another poetry discussion, which will appear in three separate playlists here on the channel. Number one, the poetry discussion playlist. Number two, the Song of Myself playlist, where we are going short or we are going stanza by stanza through Song of Myself. And number three, the Walt Whitman playlist. This is the eighth stanza in Song of Myself, and it reads as such. The little one sleeps in its cradle. I lift the gauze and look a long time and silently brush away flies with my hand. The youngster and the red-faced girl turn aside up the bushy hill. I peeringly view them from the top. The suicide sprawls on the bloody floor of the bedroom. I witness the corpse with its dabbled hair. I note where the pistol has fallen. The blab of the pave, tires of carts, slough of boot soles, talk of the promenaders, promenaders, the heavy omnibus, the driver with his interrogating thumb, the clank of the shod horses on the granite floor, the snow sleighs clinking, shouted jokes, pelts of snowballs, the hurrahs for popular favorites, the fury of roused mobs, the flap of the curtained litter, a sick man inside born to the hospital, the meeting of enemies, the sudden oath, the blows and fall, the excited crowd, the policeman with his star quickly working his passage to the center of the crowd, the impassive stones that receive and return so many echoes, what groans of overfed and half-starved who fall sunstruck or in it or in fits, what exclamations of women taken suddenly who hurry home and give birth to babes. What living and buried speech is always vibrating here. What howls restrained by decorum. Arrests of criminals. Slights. Adulterous offers made. Acceptances. Rejections with convex lips. I mind them. Or the show or resonance of them. I show, I come, and I depart. So this is, um, this would seem, I think, to be a bit of a mixed bag of a verse of poetry, sort of all over the place. But I think that that is not a bug, but a feature. Um, this part of the poem is, I'm trying to find something on my, on my, on the internet here. Um, this is, a, if anything, is about stark individualism in Walt Whitman. Surely it can be agreed upon that it is the, the verse that starts with a baby and ends with someone, or, or transitions very quickly to someone, doesn't even end with it, to someone who has taken their own life. This reminds me very much of a song by Audio Slave, written by Chris Cornell. The song is called Be Yourself, and here are some of the lyrics. Someone falls to pieces, sleeping all alone. Someone kills the pain. Spinning in the silence, she finally drifts away. Someone gets excited in the chapel yard, catches a bouquet. Another lays a dozen white roses on a grave. And be yourself is all that you can do. To be yourself is all that you can do. Someone finds salvation in everyone. Another, only pain. Someone tries to hide himself, down inside himself, he prays. Someone swears their true love until the end of time. Another runs away, separate or united, healthy or insane. 
Um, there must be something to this collection of images, this collection of fragments from people's lives. This, this verse from the poem represents that be yourself by audio slave represents something in a random slice of people's lives forces us to turn inward and to recognize that the multitude, if I can use that word in, in correlation with Walt Whitman, the multitude of experience should root us in our own. Being exposed to all of these stories, seeing all of these fragments of people's lives should not put us into this flurry of experience. What it should do is remind us that we have our life to live. This seems to me to be maybe a poetic device, but not for the audience instead of the poet that is repeatedly transcribed into poetry. What I mean to say is, it may be that what part of what a poet is, is taking all of these random bits of life to which you're exposed during the course of your day and making it into something that is readable, relatable, poetic, etc. But... There has to be an interface between the poet and that world in order to use it. And the interface between the poet and that world that allows them to use it is this sheathing between the poet and the world that says, now look, you are you. You can take this baby's story. You can take this self-deletion. But you can only understand it as yourself. The, the, sort of, I guess, maybe the way to think of it would be like social media. We, if you are the poet, is the user of social media. The social media app is the world. You see little snippets of everyone's life. The person, the individual's post on, on X is the poem. But every poet, every writer, has to have a phone to do this. The phone is the mechanism in the poet's mind that allows them to say that allows them to transcribe, that allows them to make this other thing that is an interpretation of the world. The phone itself is that reminder of individuality. Now, Ironically, in our world, your phone is where you lose a lot of your individuality, where you step through the portal into the online world, etc. But I, I do wonder if it is an every writer conundrum that all of this sensory overload has to be digested somehow. And so what it is that the writer ends up doing with it is making that randomness into the conduit through which individuality is expressed and necessitated. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. If you find yourself here by chance but not design, literature is the only thing I do on this channel, dropping multiple videos every single week. There's poetry every Monday. 
and I hope to have you back for the next one.